Well, hi again for USCFSales.com. I'm Steve Lopez with another Fritz 13 tip for you. Which brings me to a point, by the way, immediately, which is I've had some emails from people saying, if you're talking about things in Fritz 13, do they also apply to Fritz 12? That uh, It really depends on what feature we're talking about. All of the Let's Check stuff that we've looked at in a whole long list of videos there for about a month and a half, two months, that's only Fritz 13. But when we're talking about analysis features in Fritz, which we did in the last couple of videos, the last two videos, we looked at full analysis. In this video, we'll look at blunder check. This stuff is also in Fritz 12, and the way you get to it is in the exact same place. This is what you're seeing on your screen here. So that having been said, we looked at full analysis mode. Fritz will look at your game, give a little bit of verbal commentary, just little phrases here and there, and show you where you could have improved your play. This, what you're seeing in this pane, is what blunder check looks like. It's what I call old school computer analysis. Computer software, chess computer software, for 20 years or more has been doing its analysis the way you see it here, where it gives you numerical analysis. Now, while it may initially be a little bit harder to understand than full analysis mode, this is much more precise. It can tell you exactly how much better a particular line of play is than what was actually played. For example, here at 17th move, Black made this move and wound up being one and two-thirds of a pawn behind in Fritz's estimation, whereas had Black instead made this move and both sides played all of these moves, Black would have still been behind but only about a half a pawn. It's much more precise than informant symbol analysis. Now, how do you make this happen? How do you do blunder check? Let me show you. First of all, you want to go to a database, so click the database button to go to your game list. Pick out a game by clicking on it. Go to the database tab and select blunder check and that will give you this dialogue. A lot of the stuff we've already looked at, there are a lot of features here that are just the same as in full analysis, which we looked at in the last two videos. Side to analyze, of course, I recommend both. That way you see not only the mistakes you made, but where your opponent made mistakes and gave you some opportunities. That will be in there as well. Storage, replace, and append, we've covered that in the last couple of videos. Output is something new. You can have Fritz give its commentary as either replayable variations, as we just saw, or text, which is a string of moves that will only appear on the screen. In other words, you'll only see a, a list of moves, a variation. Well, let's go back to a game here. I'll show you you would see these moves as text commentary on the screen, but you wouldn't be able to replay them. I don't know why somebody would ever pick annotate as text rather than annotate as variations. I'm sure there's some reason out there. I have no idea why. Very important, if you have an annotated game where you don't want to lose the old annotations, do not check erase old annotations. I generally don't even fool with that. I'll leave it alone. Check main line, check variations. Check main line means that Fritz will analyze the moves that were actually played in the game. If the game already has commentary in it, already has variations, for example, you may have put in some variations yourself. You're getting ready to put a game up online that you've annotated. You can check your variations. Fritz will double check your work. It will double check your analysis, your variations that you put into the game before publication. It's like having somebody look over a paper before you, you publish it in an academic journal or something. Fritz will look at your variations to make sure they are correct. In fact, originally when Blundercheck was first added to Fritz back around Fritz 5 or so, uh, the programmers thought that would be the primary use for blunder check, would be professional players or professional writers double checking their work with it. That's why they call it blunder check. And for some silly reason, they continue to characterize it in this manner. What blunder check is, it's old school computer analysis instead of full analysis mode, which gives you lines of play and informant symbols instead of numbers. That's the only real difference here. We've looked at all these different options here, except store evaluation is another one that is not in full analysis. When you go back to a game that we've already looked at, like this one, all these numbers that appear after every move in the game, of course, it doesn't happen at the be beginning because those are opening book moves. But once you're out of book, Fritz analyzes every move. These numbers, these evaluations you see after each move, that's what checking store evaluations will give you. That's what that will provide if you uncheck it, you will not get those numbers after every move in the game. Of course, training, 
time training questions. We've talked about that before. We'll look at that in a little more in-depth next time around in the next video. Write full variations. If you uncheck it, you'll get the initial move of each variation. You won't have the variation go the whole way out to the end. There's no reason to uncheck it. Threshold and time we looked at in the last video at length. However, there's an additional setting here I want to talk about in Blunder Check. You have a choice of time or depth. You can't pick both. It's one or the other. Why would you ever pick depth? And I said that for a long time in various videos. By the way, if you're going to do depth, do a decent number, 21, 23, 25. Let it go to a decent depth. Well, as it turns out, Fritz 13 is a single processor engine. In other words, when you run Fritz 13 on a multi-processor or multi-core machine, as most computers are today, it's only going to use one core or one processor, meaning you have additional processing power that Fritz isn't using. So the cool part about depth is that you can actually fi you know, launch a game, launch analysis, fire it up, let it run through a game, and Fritz will always go, for example, if I was to click OK now, Fritz would always go to a depth of 23 ply, 23 half moves, when it presents this analysis. Why is that important? Because I could then minimize Fritz, go to my desktop, launch something else. I could do some spreadsheet work, I could write an article, I could do other things on my computer while Fritz is analyzing, and Fritz will always analyze to a depth of 23 ply, no matter how long it takes. So that's what depth is good for. If you're going to use your computer for other things while Fritz is analyzing, and this applies to using a single processor version of Fritz or Ribka or Junior or Hyrux or Shredder, depth is a good thing. If you're using a multiprocessor version, one of the deep versions of the software, you probably want to go with time. If you're having the software analyze a game or multiple games overnight, go with time instead of depth but it's ultimately your choice. What depth is really good for is if you're going to have it analyzed during the day while you're using your computer, while you're online, while you're doing work. You can have it analyzed to a particular depth no matter how long it takes, no matter what else you're doing on your computer, no matter how much processing power you're eating up with other stuff, Fritz will always analyze to that particular depth no matter how long it takes. So that's the difference between time and depth. That's why depth is significant. Make your choices, click OK, let it rock, come back later, you'll have an analyzed game, which will look something like this. By the way, you do get time training questions from time to time where you get to pick a particular move. I'm just going to click on Solution and bail out of this, just show you the game. And here you have a fully analyzed game by Fritz. In our next video, we're going to take a look at the difference between full analysis and blunder check. We're going to graphically show you the difference bet between the two analysis forms so that you can make a more informed choice when you're picking which one you want to use. Until then, for USCFSales.com, I'm Steve Lopez. Thank you for watching.